Hello, this is Brendan, and in this video we're going to make shiny things something like a gem. Not sure what the title is yet. Um, before I get started, let me just say that there is an enormous amount of background noise, including birds chirping and cars going by and all of this stuff. So, um, with that being the case, I'm probably going to put on some uh, some background music, and that's you know should help hopefully cover up some of that. So what I've done here is I've made two layers. We have a base color layer and a lines layer. And the lines layer right now has the lines, which is a diamond shape where I'm going to make my gem. And of course I could have been a bit more careful, but uh, we'll clean that up later. It's not a perfect diamond or anything, but you know, it's there. Okay. And so then there's the base color, which has nothing on it yet. What we're going to do is go into the paint bucket tool. And I want to express a point here, which I always am try to emphasize. haven't emphasized enough yet. I'm very repetitive with some things, but not enough on the more important things. This is a very important thing to understand. I'm on the base color now, and I set the paint bucket to fill whole selection. So you see, it'll fill that color that I want, but it will also leave um, the lines layer, which is on top of it, untouched. That's good, and uh, nothing will change that. That's That behavior is normal. But what if I want to be on a separate layer and just fill in the inside of that that area there? Then I would need to go to fill similar colors and make sure that this thing right here, sample merged underneath there, that checkbox needs to be checked. Now if that checked, you can see it'll only fill in, it, it'll pay attention to the lines layer even though the lines are on a separate layer. That's very important if you're doing, well, let's say you drew a picture with just outlines and contour type of drawing, and then you want to fill in the color. You might draw a person or a cartoon, and you want to fill in their shirt, and their pants, and everything separately without having to do all of the draw, draw, draw like that. That doesn't mean I don't do draw, 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 and you don't have to do it like this. You know, Some people prefer the painting or, or drawing type of technique, and that's fine. I actually do that a lot. But this can come in handy to save uh, a lot of time, actually, to save a lot of time. It's something uh, something to keep in mind. Now we're going to draw a gem. First of all, let me do something that might be a little bit more easier to recognize. And it'll be like a ruby color, right? So I'm going to get a nice, bright, or something like just a uh, halfway saturated, at least, color. And I am doing this a bit off the cuff. I'm just kind of making this up. I've done it before, but it's been a while. So the point is to just have some kind of base color, which isn't super shiny. So a lot of people would think, oh, I want to make something shiny, so I'll just make this super strong red and go in there. And that's wrong. That's actually very wrong. You will use that red later. You might want to uh, use that later, but not at first. So actually, I'm going to use it right now. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use gradient. First, I'm going to select this uh, inside, this lines area go back to my color area and I might even no, I'm definitely going to uh, make a new layer so we can keep it separate and then I'm gonna go into gradient mode I'm gonna go from uh, foreground to transparent so and I'll choose radial it doesn't have to be radial you can do other but I, I just want to blend in a little bit of that that stronger color and I want to do so from within that layer, not on the outside. That's weird. Did I accidentally? Yeah, I must have hit a key. Okay, so I should be selected inside now. Yeah. All right. So now let me see. Yeah, it's going from foreground to transparent right around this area. Let me hit the control key around this area here, right next to the gradient option area. There's a little swap arrow, and if I flip that, it'll go from transparent to color instead, to the foreground color instead. And so do that, and now you can see how I can add that color. It'll still, it'll maintain the original color in the middle, and I'm just kind of adding the stronger color around the outside. Now since I added it on a separate layer, I can also tone it down a little bit, right? Go like this. I can lower the opacity so you barely see it, or I can turn it up so it shows a little bit all the way. And that's going to give us some intensity. So we have like a faded kind of red and a very intense hue of red. Now what we're going to want to do next is to add the highlights. So I need to cut this gem. This gem it looks kind of wobbly. Let me see uh, what's, what's the best way to do that. 
I'm going to take off my selection here with uh, Control Shift and A. Hope to turn off your selection. And I'm going to go, let me see, I'll take, I'm going to go back to that another layer. I'll make a new layer for lines. What we can do is use a darker color here, right? A thinner pen. I'm going to go somewhere in here and I'm going to hold down uh, shift and control at the same time. I'm going to have to go inside of it a little bit so I can cut it. If you hold shift and control at the same time, you should get some perfect angles and you'll be able to know. Oh, wait, but it's in pressure size mode. Let me turn off dynamics. You take off dynamics so that it doesn't do any fancy, uh, it doesn't change the size of your pen while you're drawing. Another really good thing to do would have been to make some vertical horizontal lines to make sure that's perfect, but I think I got it. I think I kind of nailed that. doesn't look too bad. <clears throat> so let me select that area inside there. It should be rather perfect. And I'm going to go back to the base color. First, uh, since I've selected the... Whoops. I accidentally hit the canvas. Since I select the inside, I can hold Control i So now um, it's on the opposite of the inside, right? Control I will invert the selection. So now I'm, I've, I have selected everything but the diamond on the inside. So while I'm on the other layers, I'll just hit that delete key and I'll go to the other layer, hit the delete key and I'll erase all the other stuff. And so there I am left with the slightly wobbly diamond to begin with. <clears throat> I want to keep that selection right now and bring it in so that I can make some of the edges of uh, uh, of the diamond. And so what I'll do, instead of doing a lot of work, I'll just go into select menu here and go to shrink. Based on the size of my canvas, I think if I shrink it by 50 pixels, that should go in by 50 pixels. And there we go. Now you can see it shrank and it's on the inside. Okay, it's still well, it's still on the inside, but I want it to be on the outside so I can make some uh, some shadows. So I'm going to hit Control I again, or you can go into the Select menu and say Invert, and you see it says there Control I. And so now that it's inverted, I'll make another layer. I'm getting obsessive with the layers. So I would normally do this, uh, you know, in a different way. And uh, now I'm going to hold. As you can see, now I can paint and make like shadows and stuff around here and it won't bother the inside like that. But um, I want it to also not paint out in this area too. So I'm going to hold down the, um, the shift key and which layer has all the color on it. Yeah, on this color, hold down the shift key and select again. And so that will add the new selection. Oh uh, wait, nope, nope, nope. I got confused there. This is a bad, bad lesson, but good for learning experience. Control I. So I'm selecting the outside, then hold shift with the the other thing. Yes. Okay. So now you can see that's the opposite of what I want. So I do Control I. Okay. I made that way too confusing, but now you can see I'm actually this is what I wanted, right? This is what I wanted, and so to make that much less confusing for you, if you're doing that, if you're, I mean, I, I'm just you know having fun here, but if you're, um, yeah, actually trying to learn something, uh, that the way I did that was very confusing. Just understand that you want to select this inside area and the outside area so you get basically the ridge of the diamond and you can figure that out I, I know that the point of this is not you know even to teach that so you'll be fine you'll be fine and it's good to see my mistakes I think sometimes it's uh, I don't like watching those videos where people don't make mistakes it's really boring as you can see I chose sort of a bluish color which is good uh, when people use pure white for light and pure black for shadow, uh, can be a little not so realistic in, in many cases. Um, <clears throat> so I used blue and yellow is a more of a realistic kind of sunlight, but it's got to be very, very whitish kind of yellow. And I'll put that up here. You see, I have the light up here. I'll erase the parts I don't want. So we get the feeling that the light should be, you know, over 
in this area here and the shadow is down over here. And so you're starting to get a, a feeling of like a ruby kind of gem shape coming out there. Yeah, it's a little bit better. So just to add to that a little bit, because I can't feel the other two edges, um, I also want to make this side a little bit more shaded, but not a lot. Let me see what I can do with this. I'll grab um, Lasso Tool. I am do I, I said from the beginning, I think, well, I am doing this some, somewhat uh, off the cuff. I'm making this up as I go along, so... I hope you're not going to be one of those angry YouTubers who says uh, that I suck because... <laughs> well, go ahead and say that. I don't care. Um, <clears throat> there's that. But those, those types of comments are annoying sometimes. Okay. And so... Yeah, because I, I wasn't trying... This isn't supposed to be a tutorial anyway. So there's that. See how I can do use the gradient again to come up a little bit. And again, we'll turn the opacity down just until I feel like it matches the other areas. And then, whoops, did I add something there? No, okay. Uh, so I want to merge a couple of these layers. I have this one, this one. Yeah, these, this is basically what I would normally call a shade, light and shade kind of thing there. I want to merge those because too many layers confuses me and slows things down in terms of memory. Back to the lasso tool here. And I'm going to do the same thing. Oh, that's a gradient tool. Got the wrong tool somehow. Okay. And I can still kind of feel where the edges are, even though uh, I removed a lot of stuff. Whoops. Uh, when you make a mistake in Lasso Tool and GIMP, you tell me if you know, but it seems that you can't undo with the Lasso Tool, with the lasso tool still on. So you have to start all over. Um, okay. So I'll go back to... I made an extra layer. I'm going back to the gradient tool. I'm going to add a little bit of gradient coming from the top like that with this one. Okay, good. And it should have less light on that side because, uh, as we said earlier, the, the actual light should be coming from over in, in this direction. Okay, so now with that all how I want it, I can merge again and I'll have this one light and shade layer and remember, we started off with just one color, and we uh, did a gradient. That's what this, uh, you know, lesson is, or you know, video. That's not really a lesson, but this video is about is layers. So, yeah, sorry I made a mistake with all that other stuff, but you can see the result that is coming out here already is starting to look nice with only like one, two, three layers, and how many tricks did I use? You know, it was like ten different things or something. Not too much work. Pretty easy when you know what you're doing. But I feel like we're not even there yet. We can take it even more, and especially if we know what we're doing. So I'm going to, I might even merge these layers. If I'm 100% confident, and I am, that I'm going to stick with these, I'm going to merge these layers. It makes life easier. So now I have all of that, basically everything I've done so far. Look at that, by the way. It's pretty cool. That's what, that's what happens when I take away the bottom layer, right? Okay, so I have all of that. I, and I'm, I might leave these two separate because I can see there's something there. What happens if I play with the opacity on that? Yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot to be played with there. All right, but I'm going to make a highlight layer. And everything I'm doing for this gem is also the same exact thing that I think you would do or you should do for, like, anything. Um, and what I mean by that is, like, if you're drawing a person or a mountain or a house, just anything, uh, you should start off with a base color and then add some kind of like, uh, nothing is all the same color from head to toe. There should always be a little bit of gradient to things. And, um, and then you add layers, you add a light and shade, and then you're going to have highlights, and then there's like texture and, and other things like that. Okay, so uh, while I was talking there, I just made a selection of this full area, so I want to make sure I'm drawing only inside that area. And uh, over here, the new layer is this one, right? Yeah. Now I'm going to go with actual pure white. For a regular mid mid-tone to high range kind of light it was okay to use a little bit of yellow a little bit of color but now I want to use some really 
really soft, really light and opacity white. And the reason for that is what? It's because actual light cannot be represented in uh, you know two-dimensional drawing format without whiteness to it. Or at least we should say it helps a lot. With all this stuff flattened down here, let me see if I can select this area. No, I can't. Not very well. Anyway, so I'm going to use the lasso tool again. And I'm trying to get this inner diamond. I want to make sure that it's a separate surface from the other edges and the way that light affects this particular surface is going to be completely different from the other edges so I want to isolate it. I'll give an example and you'll see it when, it, when I do this. Let's go like this. Might might make even one more layer. Yeah. All right, let me leave it on this layer. We'll see what happens. Yeah. See that there? How kind of like it's just you can tell when I do that and let me remove that um, and zoom in a little bit. You remove that uh, that that selection. See how that? Let me zoom out a little too. It, it's kind of a lot more realistic, like that, because this edge over here is completely different from the the surface on the front, right? They're two completely different edges. So you want the light, the way that light behaves upon them, to also behave completely differently. So that's that. Um, I don't like the way that came out. Exactly. I uh, wish a selection a little bit bigger. So I'm going to select and grow, and I'll grow it by three pixels, and I will redo that. I can also make a decision right now whether or not I want to use um, the radial, or uh, I could go bilinear, for example. Let me show you that, just in case. I'll go bilinear and lower the opacity. Oh, that's on a different layer. That is way too strong. I'm trying to lower the opacity. Yeah, let's try it over here. I'll actually, on the gradient opacity, you can lower it, lower it there too. It doesn't always have to be the um, the, uh, the the layer itself that gets lowered. I do that a couple times. Watch how it comes out. See, it's a little bit lighter. See, there's a different effect. This bilinear effect like that. You could use radial effect. These are really important to play with the different effects. They actually have a square one, which might be suitable for this type of thing. Look at that. See how it makes kind of a diamond-like square? That, depending on what you're making, that might actually be really, really useful. And that actually might make just perfect sense since we're doing a, sort of a gem. But I think that would give it more of a crystal look. And I'm going for a gem look, so it should be flawless. And I'm just going to make pretend that there's a radial light somewhere. And I'm going to go a couple times with it until I get almost white that almost white right there that'll give you the sparkle and the shine but since that shine is right there let me come in with a big brush and now I'm gonna forget completely about remember how it's important to separate the edges and the surfaces while you're shading but now in order to get a real sparkle out of it I'm gonna forget about all that stuff and let the light just go ahead and cover this whole area and sparkle out and shine like that that's really gonna give you an effect that the light is glowing and the gem itself is glowing too. Another important part of this, uh, you remember I uh, was playing with the layers uh, earlier, is to, um, how to say, uh, I get apathetic <laughs> when I'm talking sometimes. Uh, I kept this base layer separate for a reason earlier, remember? Now I'm going to demonstrate what that reason is. This is through some experience, a lot of experience I have. Now I really want to play with that red. I'm going to darken it. And I might even change a color. I, I might even move it into, like, I don't know, darker purple or something. And let me get, like, really high saturation and bring out a color, just like crazy color. And I'm just going to try it. I want to see what happens. See. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that's right. That's bringing out some luster right there. Yeah. See what happened? I'm bringing out a bit of that purple on the bottom. That's like when you look at a real jewel and you spin it in a light and you can get like different colors coming out of it. Oh uh, yeah, that's good. And I might even make it even darker and even higher saturated. And just around the edges really yeah, really kind of nail it in there. Something like that. Now we're getting tons of feeling and texture. However, now here's the advanced super power trick. What happens when you shine light on a jewel or a gem? It's transparent 
almost and it goes through to the other side so let's make some of that by on this base layer I'll make one more layer just above the base layer and even though there's this dark thick rich crystally kind of feeling going on it's also you're also going to see the light coming through the other side but in a blurred you know big blurred kind of way did I say big bird or big, big blurred yeah something like that it's kind of like a be blurred out out there maybe even like that kind of. would it be up here a little bit maybe a little down there just coming through coming through on the different sides I'm experimenting I'm using you know I, I'm one finger on the undo key I set my own hot key there I'm experimenting a little here you know I'm feeling that this might be one of those situations where I'd only see it from that contained area and so you do have to think while you're working this isn't one of those oh I planned a uh, one two three steps for you tutorials and then you go and you can't you know you or you do do exactly what I do but later on you can't prove yourself as an artist because you're totally like well he showed me how to do one thing but how do you do all these other things <laughs> no I, I, I'm letting you follow me through in a on a thought process here so let's try that's way better isn't it what do you think of that that's way better and we can do the same thing down down here you have to experiment a little. And you might even be looking at what I'm doing now and say, you know what, if I was him, you know what I'd do? And to all the people who are thinking that right now, I applaud you and I agree with you. Go ahead and do it. That's what I want you to do. Do what your idea is, not mine. We'll all try different things and we'll compare the results. Now, last step. I did this on purpose. I gave us a slightly gray background but if you really want the richness and color and shininess to pop out what do you do you put it in a darker room right so let's get dark a nice dark color here uh, I could even do it with a gradient now nah, just fill, it, fill the whole thing right now there you go look at that it pops right out see something missing right there did I have it uh, I didn't have fill whole selection let me have it set to fill the whole selection that should work yeah yeah, that's pretty good. Now, we got that. That's a pretty shiny, shiny little gem right there. I, I'd pay for that. If you really wanted to uh, get more fancy with it, what would you do? Add more edges. This is kind of simple. It just has that one flat top big surface there. But, oh, man, it's gorgeous. I love it. I think it's great. You could, you've could, you seen cut gems before. You've seen diamonds before. You know, They'll have more fancy. You could even, like, I don't know. Uh, etch a dragon in there or something you know imagine you, you go follow my steps for this and make a logo for the, somebody's company with this exact type of design and put their logo inside that gem you'll make you're gonna make some money that's uh, that's money right there I just gave you money literally just handed you money okay so look at the, look at this down here you see the richness of the colors blending and then the, the shine subtle shine coming off right there man that's great I like how that turned out I'm gonna go ahead and live dangerously Normally, we always want to keep our la layers separately, uh, or keep, <laughs> keep them separate. Um, or no, actually, you know what I do? Uh, there is a safe way to do this. I was going to say, oh, look at that when you play with these layers. Yeah, nice, nice little surprises there. Here's what I'll do. I was going to live dangerously and merge all those layers. I got a better idea. Let me hide that background layer. I'm going to right-click on here and go new from visible. What does that do? Well, here, I'm going to hide all the layers that I was previously working on but wait why is my gem still there because new from visible creates a flattened merged copy of all of the visible layers that you had so I can hide the layers of the stuff I don't want to copy and just keep all this stuff open right and what it does is it makes a new copy of everything that's visible now I can turn my background layer back on and I can just with one click I can play with this this visible layer right there as if it weren't beautiful enough there's one more step here that I, again everything here is experimental I might end up just I don't know regretting this 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 could be a useless exercise <laughs> we'll see what happens and if that's the case maybe I'll just cut it out of the video no uh, I usually don't do that I'm gonna play look at this all these things in here in the hue saturation dialogue oh my god what a lifesaver you see up here it's the second one down in the color menu. Hue saturation. Look at that. I could copy and paste this diamond. As a matter of fact, 
as a matter of fact, what am I going to do? I'm going to copy and paste this. This is great. Copy. Because we, remember, we did um, new from visible. So now I have mult. I can you know copy and paste that one layer. It was all merged into one layer. And um, there's a button I'm looking for. I need to hit this. I copy and paste something. You always have to remember to hit that. So uh, now I have three of the original gems on three separate layers here, like this. I don't know why this one is here. Let's move it. Okay. So let me take this, uh, the first one I have here, and go back to that color menu, hue saturation. Look what we can do. Oh, that was the middle, the middle one, yeah. Just change the color. So easy. Just change the color like that. Oh, these beautiful colors, gem. That's not enough, is it? No. We still play with the lightness. Make it a little bit lighter. Play with the saturation. Maybe it's a gray gem. Take Saturation means the amount of color. Look at this. If I, if I floor it all the way to the top, you get like super color. Let me zoom in a little so you can see that. And some people might like that better. In fact, I know a lot of people like that better. I don't. Uh, I, I, I like more uh, duller, softer colors. But that can be incredibly useful. If you're making a game, something for kids, you know. Let's leave that one like that. Let's go up to another one. Maybe this one. Uh, I think we're focused on the one on the right. <coughs> and the colors again. Hue saturation. First, let's play with the saturation this time. Let's, let's see what happens. See how it goes totally gray. I put it all the way down and slowly. Yeah, we go here. Wow. For me, that's way too strong. I, I just don't like that. I, yeah. I will be willing to accept this, like 75% up. But, well, I made it how I made it, which is about here. See, but now that I saw it so bright, I don't like it back down there. Yeah, up a little bit. Okay. And then you can also play with the lightness. If I turn lightness all the way up, obviously more light. All the way down, more of that. Leave that where it was. Because my values were pretty good. This time, go for, oh, yeah. Amber. Amber kind of look there. I really like that. I'm not liking the green. See, because I raise the saturation so much, the hues aren't coming out. Maybe there, that was a good reason why saturation can't be too high. I was liking that amber. Amber kind of look. I'm trying to get back there. It's, that's not too shabby. I like that. Saturation a little higher. You play with it. You get it where you like it on your version. And this isn't like super realistic, right? They look like something. Now I feel like that red one has to raise up a little bit in uh, saturation to match the other ones a little. Yeah, just like that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, merge these. Get them centered. So say merge down two times so they're all in one layer. And then the layer is going to be all out of proportion now, uh, merged down. So I will also go, um, first let me move it. I have my hotkey set up for that. Get them about in the center. Just right about there. Okay, and then you can right click on it and go layer to image size so that your layer is not all over the place. And that saves memory and stuff. I know it's not like super important, but when uh, you're working on big things, it's kind of annoying to have layers all over the place. There we go. There we have it. I think that's about what I'm going to do with uh, this whole video. That's what I wanted to do. That's what I planned to do. Let me experiment making the uh, background pitch black. Kind of interesting. Not too shabby. Wouldn't recommend it. Never use pitch black, really. Even if you look in a, the depth of space, there's nothing that's ever pitch black. But you can do stuff with the background, you know. There's a lot of different things. I would definitely recommend, if you want to bring out that color and the light and the shine, then you, you put things in a dark environment and it always brings that out. Oh, yeah. Which reminds me of the one last thing. It'll definitely be the last thing I'm going to do here. Is uh, to go ahead and make this uh, visible. Let's see. Um, colors. Brightness contrast right, on the visible layer. I'm not going to touch brightness first. I want to play with contrast. Look at that. Tiny little bit of contrast, does that? Bring it down. Tiny. What I do with these, all of these levers and stuff is, I see what happens when I go too far down. This is obviously too far up. Again, some people might like that. I don't play with it a little bit. I like what happened there. Actually, I might have lied. I said, <laughs> I said this was going to be the last thing. But after that, 
See how one little thing, just like make a jewel, starts off so easy and it can turn into like an all-day project. I mean, literally. Uh, we haven't even started. Well, I could add grain. If you look really, really close at some gems, they should have grain into them as a texture kind of feeling. You could go on all day. <clears throat> so, but I was, I, I just thought of one, one last thing. That really was the last thing. And I think, well, that looks, it's better. Let me go, I'll undo. That's how it was before. Redo. It's just richer a little bit, but for me it makes a difference. And I'm going to go to dodge and burn here. I forget which one is which. Okay, yeah, dodge means it's going to make it lighter. Dodge is going to add more shine and light to things, uh, usually or hopefully without affecting uh, too much of the surrounding color. Or I don't even want to say that. It's it's, it's hard to explain. But you got to be really careful with dodge. Burn will make things darker, right? But it's kind of maintaining all of the values, if you understand what that means. It's just, uh, it's going to maintain the overall value of things, but it it either lightens or darkens in a certain way. And I have, while I have dodge on, I've also selected highlights down here. And there's a, an exposure bar. I put it real high up, see what happens. Well, I guess super bright. Turn the exposure down a little bit, and eh, not so much. But that's what we want. We want it down so we can control it a little bit more. Because I can do it once like this, and if it's still not strong enough, guess what? I'll do it a couple more times, right? So it gets where I want it. No big deal. But if you throw it all the way up, you don't have that control. See that? I have little highlights here. I'm just tapping around the, the hot spots here. And see how it, the reason it's called dodge and burn. Look at, here's the original thing. Is that original? Yeah, here's the original. You can tell it's still kind of computerized. You know, it's still kind of line by line. But when you do this effect to it, it kind of does that. It's almost like when you stare at something that's really shiny and it, it has that burning kind of sensation. You can feel the heat of it. And that's why this tool is really useful. I recommend it. I could also use it lighten up different areas here and there. Look what happens, what I just did here. If I use it in this area right here where it should be shaded, let's look what happens. What it does, it intensifies the saturation of the color and simultaneously simultaneously uh, lightens up it up a bit so it does it does these things you know and I'm happy that I can go around onto each each jewel or each gem whatever you want to call them here individually and give them different you know, kind of feelings like that there you have it folks I'm not going to take any more of your time if you want more well subscribe don't worry, I'll be making more videos soon. But that's it. I, I'm pretty happy with the results. Uh, all the way from start to finish, look how far we've come. Um, I feel as though all the tricks... I mean, you could have stopped halfway and still had a really good effect. But all the way to the end, all these little extra things like, you know, using... Playing with the color panels, the saturation, hue saturation. And then all the way to the very end where I played with dodge. Um, you know, starting off the way that we had separate layers. I, actually, I should still have those layers. Let's go back here. Yeah, here was the, remember the original line that we drew just like that? Yeah. What do you think about that now? It's nothing, right? We started off with... Uh, where was that other layer? Did it, I, I might have... I might have covered it up. Base color. There's base color. Ah, uh, yeah. Started off with just like, you know, this. Basically... That's that's kind of what we started off with, a, a little box in there. And we had a little gradient to it. See where I added the purple? Yeah. Started off with that. Added some more light and shade bit by bit in different ways. You know, there, there's the original line. I'll just go ahead and delete that right now. And then our final product. So, oh yeah, let's compare one last thing. I know I keep saying that. But here was before we played with the color and light and dodge, and before we played with the color menus, and compare that to the one afterwards. And you can see there's a much more uh, stunning, more vibrant effect that we got out of it. Maybe a bit more realistic, too. Yeah. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Guys and gals, boys and girls, everyone. And uh, if you have anything to say, always feel free to comment, message me. Um, if you enjoyed this, please do feel free to share with like-minded people who would also enjoy it. 
And uh, I'm just thinking now, maybe I should end my video sometimes like this with a quick little uh, signature. I'll show you how I do that. Do 20, yeah, on full opacity usually. Make it look like an actual finished product. So, which means I can turn off this stuff. I'll just go in here on, is this layer blank? Yeah, go in here on a, and I want the uh, pressure size on. And you'll know after you see this that my signature is practiced and not a factory built perfected kind of thing. I mess it up all the time. I know how I want it to look, <laughs> but uh, yeah, and I'm doing it fast, so I'm talking to it. Anyway, that's how it is this time. And I always put the date under here, or at least a month. And so now happens to be March of 2017. There you have nice signed and finished. And I usually turn the opacity down because I, I don't want my signature to stand out like it's bragging or something. Just a little something to have there. And, uh, slide it off to the side just like that i hope you enjoyed share with your friends if you liked and uh, feel free to sub subscribe i'll have a lot more videos coming out and we'll see you soon take care have a good day <coughs>